Hey guys, my name is Michael Rona, and today is an exciting day here at Microengineering because I'm finally unveiling the beautiful Hummingbird Flight Control Unit. <laughs> the Hummingbird FCU is a quadcopter flight controller board that I developed all on my own, and it's the culmination of about a year's worth of research and development. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys all of the features, devices, sensors, you know, everything that's going to be on our flight controller. And then, um, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to show you this, guys, so let's just jump into it. So this is what a blank PCB looks like. Uh, it's just a standard two-layer PCB I designed with KiCad and got printed through JLC PCB. Um, the outer dimensions are three and a half by three and a half inches, and the mounting holes are three inches apart. And they're just standard M3 screw holes. And then to power the board, we can power it either with a battery or a DC barrel jack connector right here. These two diodes provide reverse polarity protection and then also enable both power supplies to be plugged in simultaneously. Uh, that little green guy right there, that is a 750 milliamp fuse, which of course will protect our board against short circuits. And then finally, I decided to go with some switching mode uh, voltage regulators right here to step down the battery voltage to uh, 5 volts and 3.3 volts. And then we've got some capacitors right here. There's also one on the underside of the board. And these are just, you know, your uh, standard coupling and decoupling capacitors required by these guys. So I decided to go with the Teensy 4.1 for the Hummingbird FCU's main microcontroller. And you know, as far as Arduino-based microcontrollers go, this thing is absolutely ludicrous. It has a 600 megahertz clock frequency that can overclock up to 900 megahertz. It has a hardware accelerator for accelerating single and double precision calculations. It has 1024K of RAM, eight megabytes of flash, 4,000 bytes of EEPROM memory, eight hardware serial ports with FIFO buffers, four I2C buses, and a micro SD card reader. I mean, this thing is ridiculous and is going to be an excellent computer for the Hummingbird FCU. All right, so next is the IMU, or Inertial Measurement Unit. And the IMU is arguably the most important sensor on board any drone. So the IMU I'm using is Adafruit's 9DOF Precision IMU, which features the FXOS8700 accelerometer and magnetometer and the FXAS2102 gyro. Um, the gyro has pretty low biases, the accelerometer and magnetometer are good, uh, the ADC resolution is good on this and is going to make a great IMU for our drone. Next up, in order to measure our drone's altitude, we'll be using Adafruit's BMP388 temperature and pressure sensor. This thing is really, really awesome. Its pressure and temperature sensor are very accurate, very precise. Um, the ADC resolution is good, and the sensor also features built-in oversampling and a low-pass filter to help smooth out sharp changes in temperature and pressure. Should work out very nice. All right, so next, in order to send and receive telemetry data to and from our drone, I'll be using an XB3 radio module with uh, an RPSMA antenna. Uh, XB radios communicate over 2.4 gigahertz, and I decided to go with an XB because they're small, low power, have sufficient range for my needs, and are really easy to get up and running. Next up is our drone's GPS sensor. And you know, our drone is gonna use a GPS in order to know its position as latitude, longitude, and altitude, also ground speed, course over ground, you know, all those really awesome GPS parameters. And so let's take a look at the GPS module we'll be using. This is the M Robotics Neo M8N GPS and dual compass module. And this thing is awesome. Right now we're taking a look at the upper side of the module and this is the antenna. It's a passive antenna made by a pretty good brand. Um, I wish it was an active one, but passive ones work just fine. On the underside, you can see all the juicy electronics here. Um, at the heart of the module is the Ublox Neo M8N GPS receiver, which can connect to the US GPS network and Russia's GLONASS network. Um, the primary compass right here is the ST Electronics LIS3 NDL 3-axis magnetometer. And we connect to this module with a JST connector right here. But as you can see, um, on my flight computer, we have breadboard pins. So I made this little guy right here to uh, adapt this JST connector to uh, breadboard pins, you know, no problem. Little jank, but it's all right. And finally, in order to actually fly my drone and manually control it, I'll be using a Spectrum remote receiver here, which will connect to my Spectrum six channel transmitter. And this guy outputs pilot inputs and servo positions um, over a serial connection here. And I made my own little custom adapter here to adapt this weird connector here to a normal servo plug, which will easily connect to my flight computer. All right, so next I wanna talk about all the IO we have on this board. Right here, we have the PWM output for motor one. 
And then these um, unsoldered headers right here, these are extra power outputs. So we got an extra five volt output and an extra 3.3 volt output in case we need to power any external electronics. This header right here is for connecting our Spectrum remote receiver. The next header here is an extra serial port in case we want to add another serial device. And then this final header here is for an extra I2C device. So in case we wanted to add another one in the future. And of course, what's a computer without RGB lights? So this is an RGB LED right here that we'll use to you know, indicate system status while we're on the ground or in flight. And then right here is the motor two PWM output. And in the bottom right corner is motor three PWM output. Bottom left corner, we got motor four PWM output. And then finally, in the lower left corner of the board, we have an extra PWM port that we can configure to be either an input or output. And if we solder this little solder bridge right here, we can actually supply this um, PWM port with BEC voltage, which we can, of course, use to power servo if we want. So yeah, as you can tell, there is a lot going on on this little computer here, but I'm really proud of how it turned out, and I'm really looking forward to getting this put on a drone and seeing if we can make something that flies. Now that we got the hardware side of the computer done, now it's time to move on to the even more difficult part, and that is the flight software development. There's a lot that goes into flight software development. You know, the code needs to be really fast, uh, lightweight in memory, uh, robust against errors. You know, it's really, really complex and everything's intertwined. Um, I feel pretty confident in my C and C++ programming, but it's still going to take quite a lot of time and effort to develop. And as of right now, I'm currently developing the sense of fusion algorithms. So I decided to implement a 19 state extended Kalman filter that's going to estimate quaternion orientation, um, sensor biases like the accelerometer and gyroscope biases, position, velocity, and uh, local magnetic field vector. So very complex, <laughs> but it's really, really cool. And I definitely want to make a video sharing stuff about that with you guys. And really good news for you guys, I've also decided to completely open source this project. So you can go onto my GitHub page and download the PCB schematic files if you want to print your own board. And then you can also dive deep into my flight software, you know, see how everything works and then submit pull requests and issue reports if you guys want to offer any suggestions on how to um, improve my code. I would really, really appreciate if you guys did that. And of course, the best way to stay up to date with this project is to subscribe. So please do so if you're interested. And I'm really excited to get sharing this stuff with you guys. So I guess uh, I'll see you in the next video.